plaintiff, Raymond Lusty Jr., met the defendant in rehab. And after dating for a year, they got married. Raymond claims the defendant's alcoholism turned their lives upside down. And after CPS took their children away, he filed for divorce. Raymond suing his ex-wife for his several unpaid loans and gas money. Defendant Lauren Lusty admits that she was addicted to alcohol for 15 years. And as a result, she lost her children and a lucrative job. Lauren says her life is now back on track and she's doing everything she can to make amends to those she has hurt, including Raymond. However, she denies owing him for anything. Start with you. Um, my ex-wife here, who I still care about very much, uh, is doing very well now, but it has not always been the case. Um, she's an alcoholic, and a perfect example of how alcoholism can affect and destroy your life. We, we got married in 2000. We met at... Uh, we met her at the rehab, as a matter of fact. Got married in 2000. What were you there for? Uh, I thought my drinking was getting out of control. So you thought? It. Yes, I did. Was it or not? <laughs> yes, it was. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <laughs> got married in 2000. Things were going along nicely. We were drinking socially, just pretty much beer. Uh, but then Lauren turned to wine, and what really did it was probably the vodka. She was getting into vodka pretty heavy at the point where the kids were hiding the bottles, and I was pouring them out when he found what her. What year? It was about 2008, 2009. Isn't it part of recovery not to drink any alcohol ever in the future? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead. So at 08, it started getting out of hand with her. How about you? How about uh, I was you? still drinking beer, Your Honor. Was it getting out of hand? No, it wasn't. All right. So what was happening? Um, in 2009 was when it pretty much came to a head. Um, I come, just come back from picking up the kids at school, pulled in, and there's police surrounding the house. Um, I got the kids inside, and then Lauren came home, hit the mailbox, drove into a tree, and almost hit a cop. While uh, the police were outside? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember almost hitting a cop car. I remember the other... Uh, but, no, you are drunk. Now, anyway. go ahead. <laughs> what? <laughs> what were they doing there already? Apparently, she, there was a couple of hit-and-runs at the pick-and-save parking lot. The same day? Yes, Your Honor. Within the last hour before they arrived. They knew her, they knew where she lived, so they went right away to her house and just waited for her to come back. And she came back and hit... Yeah, mailbox, the tree, missed the cop. In front of the police. But, yeah. Yes, Was Your Honor. Was she arrested? Yes, Your Honor. That the last time, 09? Uh, no, Your Honor. But that's when things really came to a head because it was two or three days later when I'd taken the kids to school that while I was gone, Child Protective Services came by at 6.30 in the morning. Lauren answered the door and she'd been drinking. And that was, that was pretty much it. We lost the kids then. Um, Lauren lost her job. Then we lost the house. Um, and I thought, yeah, I could just couldn't take it anymore. The liability and just watching herself destroy herself. I was worried for her and I was worried for me and for everybody else Ma out there too. You want to tell me any of this? Um I believe actually that um, prior to the rehab, I had already uh, become an alcoholic. Um, I had ha had a horrible uh, incident, 15-year marriage, went, went by the wayside with a husband who left me while I was pregnant with his son. Um, I had a very advanced job that was very, very, very stressful, and I had twins as well, so I had three children under the age of three. <laughs> And it became a nightmare for me. Uh, between you trying had, to you had a pretty good job, you say? Uh, yes, I have two degrees from United. Back Uni then, you had a pretty good job. Uh, excellent. I, I moved up to the ranks of vice president okay. of the largest PR firm in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very lucrative and very very successful career up until the point uh, that I became. I I it was my tool to escape the pain from both the divorce as well as the stress from that incident of having to carry on with my kids. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't reach out to the right people. So that's what began your addiction to alcohol. For how many years? 15 years. For the past two years and one month exactly, I've been sober and clean. Good. <laughs> and it's been tough, but I did it and I'm planning on continuing because by the grace of God, I will not go down that path mm -hmm. again. Good. How many people did you hurt or lives did you ruin? Too many. My children, my 
mothers, my husbands, um, friends, um, people that I was working with. Uh, I hurt a lot of people, and to this day, I regret it. I, it's fully my responsibility. Uh, and what have you been doing to try and redeem uh, yourself with all the hurt that you've caused others, whether it's helping them directly or helping society in general? Well, currently, I volunteer for three organizations. Um, three times a week, I go to the Sussex Food Pantry and. Um, I go and, believe it or not, just go through tons mm -hmm. of clothes and sort them, put them in, you know, on coat hangers, putting yeah. them there. Proud that you're doing that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as is a recovering alcoholic, going to AA meetings is a very serious uh, matter for me. And I also want to say that I've been doing everything I can to make amends yeah. to my children and my husband and my mother. It's all you can do. Good. And sir, how does she owe you four thousand five hundred and eighty-three dollars? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. We I filed for divorce and we divorced in two thousand nine, and both went our separate ways. Um, as fate would have it, in two thousand twelve, Lauren called me. We started talking on the phone. We ended up going out uh, because we'd already been married. Being intimate was no big deal, um, so we were spending a lot of time together. And uh, she was still drinking, but it wasn't real bad, or so I thought. And then I came over to her, she bought a new home, and I uh, came over to her new home I was helping her with, and she was passed out, and there was a bunch of vodka bottles. Um, I've got a picture of, jeez. Yes, see but it. Yeah, it was pretty. So, so, uh, I went and I ordered some, uh, there was no food in the house, so I ordered some takeout food, and I went to go pick it up because Lauren was asleep. Uh, on the way back, I saw her pulling out of a liquor store. Um, I waved her over to the side of the road. I said, what's going on? What are you doing? Um, she said she bought a bottle, and she was real sorry. I said, well, just follow me home. We'll get something to eat and, uh, you know, talk about this. Well, we pulled into her neighborhood. I drove towards her house, and she pulled the other way. Okay. I got pulled up to her home. I sat there for a few minutes and waited and waited. I called her cell phone. She didn't answer, and then I heard sirens. Um, what happened this time? I followed the sirens, and Lauren hit a house, hit a home. A mobile home. A mobile home. Yes, a mobile home. <laughs> and the police were all there, and ambulances were there. It was pretty serious. Um, because, yeah, it's a mobile home, she, her wedged, she wedged the Mercedes underneath it, and the doors were pinned closed, and she had this bottle of vodka that apparently was open. So she thought, I guess, that she would t take care of destroy the evidence by drinking it. So yeah. the cops have the car surrounded. She's stuck in there, and she's drinking there. Um, actually, at that point, I was actually trying to kill myself. I was, I had gotten down that low in my alcoholism. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to destroy evidence. I just okay. wanted oh, I, to throw that out there. Yeah. Right. So by the time they did get her out of the car, she was pretty, pretty well intoxicated. By the time they got her into the ambulance, she was unconscious. By the time they got her to the hospital, I believe they had to defibrillate her two or three times. Her liver failed, her kidneys failed. Mm. She was on a ventilator for four days in ICU. It was to the point where uh, at first we'd suspended her do not resuscitate order, but then I had to call the kids and get together and get, we're getting ready for a funeral almost. Mm. Wow. Um, and she, uh, she's a .44, which wow. people aren't supposed to survive. Oh, I have pictures mm. of the car underneath the <laughs> stuck is in the house. Is that the last incident, hopefully? Uh, yes, it is, Your Honor. So how many times, ma'am, were you convicted uh, of drunk driving or otherwise hurt? Uh, fourth. Four? Yes, four. And you spent only how many months in jail altogether? Um, actually, are, are you talking about for all, all yes, sentences? Yes, all the sentences, um, four times. Well, three months for the second and another three months at a woman's rehab. And then um, I was on electronic surveillance for the third. And for the fourth, I got six um, months in jail plus three years probation. Um, I won't, won't be able to drive for three years. Um, I have weekly, two, time, two times a week I report to a WCS officer and I'm subject to daily, you know, urine screening. Okay. Was there an agreement regarding these loans? And tell me what the agreement was, if, yes, if so. Was. What was it? The, the, the agreement was... Give me the loan dates. 
okay, if I would pay, make her house payments on the house she just bought, that she would pay me back as soon as she got out. She was involved in a couple of class action lawsuits, plus I think if she stayed sober, and by the time she went to court, by the time she went to jail, she'd been sober for over a year. So I was confident that, that she'd be able to pay me back. It was $500 a month for the rent. Every month I paid that for eight months. Good man. But then I've got all those. How about the gas? Well, gas, the gas money we figured, since I live 29 miles away, we figured it was $20 a day in gas. And we settled on $25 because she had a couple appointments every day. Now that's just since she's been out of jail. When she was in jail, she was in Hoover, and she had, three, she had three AA meetings and two doctor's appointments every week that I picked her up and took her to that I'm not suing for any gas or anything. I thought that was my, my job to support her during this. She well, didn't you have are a suing for anymore. gas, but you say you're not suing for that gas. No. You pick and choose said. which gas <laughs> you <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to grant him the loan. I believe you, uh, I believe uh, there was an agreement that you repay 3000 $958. He had no more real obligation to you. Gas money, I'm not convinced, sir, and you must convince me, and you haven't. So I'll grant you the monies for the loan, $3,958. And God bless you, and... Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, thank you for you coming in. Have a good day. Oh, you know I still love you, and I still want to make things work. And you're, you've got two years in now. That's pretty good. If you can keep it up, I think we could stay together. So I'm glad to see you sober. Thank you. <laughs>